Eagle style, so I'm gonna bring her over in a second. And then the second part of the discussion is gonna be around building your personal brand and what it means to you and what it means to your career. And I can't think of a better speaker to guide us in that direction, and that's gonna be none other than Christy Wyatt, who's the uh, president and uh, CEO of Good Technology, which Tech Data just uh, established a relationship with literally within the last week or so. And so I want to bring up Sandy. I want to tell you a little about her. Uh, she'll probably go into a little bit more detail. But uh, she uh, attended uh, uh, USC uh, Santa Barbara in California for a while before uh, going to work for a leading case manufacturer. She's originally from uh, Johannesburg, uh, Africa, uh, South Africa, so uh, not originally from the States. But uh, she is uh, started off literally as an entrepreneur spirit. She'll probably talk to you about her personal journey, but it started with her family. Many members of her family have certainly been entrepreneurs over the years. Um, not only is she a great leader, a great business person, but she's also a mother as well. She's a mom, she has three little ones, and that is certainly near and dear to her heart. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up Sandy Rouse. Let's give Sandy Rouse a call. Daniel sacrificed his professional rugby career 
and family business to start a new life with me in Los Angeles. After one year, I was pregnant with our first daughter. I decided to not take maternity leave. At nine months pregnant, the doctor ordered, no more flying. So off I went driving seven plus hours to meet with my clients, still wearing my heels, lifting my 80 pound sample bag, despite my massive belly. So massive that I actually gave birth to a 10 pound healthy baby girl named Sienna. I continued with my work as I had responsibilities to fulfill and deadlines to meet. With my husband still getting acclimated in this country, I was supporting our family, which was reliant on my income. As with most women, I was juggling so many roles in so many settings. It was challenging to say the least. I'm a workaholic by nature, and I quickly try to master the skill sets of motherhood, timing when to breastfeed in anticipation of the next conference call, changing diapers in between cooking dinner for my family, and even conquering the breast pump in between business trips by plane and by train. This is not new. Women have been doing the balancing act for decades, but these days the expectations are higher and the network of support is smaller, which is why 43% of women feel that their stress levels have increased over the last five years. Married moms with children aged 18 and under are now the primary breadwinner in 15% of households. Daughters are more than twice as likely than sons to care for aging parents, and mothers do, near, do nearly double the child care that dads do. And so we learn how to give 100% to everything we do, even if we can't give 100% of our time to any one of our many responsibilities. 18 months after Sienna was born, I gave birth to my son Oliver. I felt I owed it to myself as well as my family to take maternity leave. Oliver was three days old when we came home from the hospital, and my employer called to tell me that I no longer had a job. I was their number one achiever, and I had devoted a huge part of my life to my working career. I knew at that very moment that I had two choices. I could stay in bed, become depressed, and I could feel sorry for myself. Or, I could get myself together, pick up the pieces, and start my own business. I chose the latter. My children needed diapers, and I needed to help put food on the table. Sometimes, when things seem like they're falling apart, they may actually be falling into place. Many people advised me against starting my own business. I chose to ignore the negative voices, in order to live a positive life. After all, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide you want to be. I needed to build my own dreams or someone else was gonna hire me to build theirs. With great determination, I was up for the challenge. I launched EcoStyle during a recession, knowing that I had a long road ahead of me. After all, life is not only about the destination, but the journey we travel to get us there. I had to quickly learn the ins and outs of owning a business, setting goals each week. After all, a goal without a plan is just a wish. I quickly learned that I would miss 100% of the opportunities if I didn't take them. And I failed, and I failed over and over again, and that is why I succeed. In 2010, EcoStyle became a small certified women-owned business through WeBank, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. I also felt that it was time to network with professional women and tap into their wealth of knowledge. I needed to hear what worked, and just as importantly, I needed to hear what did not work. Many challenges still loomed. EcoStyle's trademark was registered, but I couldn't come up with a massive array of SKUs as I had limited means, small capital, and I was self-financing the business. I'm sure there are many of you in this room today are wondering, how was I self-financing this business? I took drastic measures as big as selling my home, my most valuable asset, and I took a risk on myself, not knowing the outcome, but believing in the endless possibilities. Too many of us are not living our dreams because we are living our fears. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you believe in yourself, you are halfway there. I did not know where to start in terms of finding factories. I got on a plane to China in search of the right factories for eco style. Let me tell you, traveling to China as a single female and not speaking the language is not an easy task. Three trips later, I found reliable and reputable factories, and within 12 months, my product line was readily available. I didn't have the capital required for designers and bookkeepers, customer service, a warehouse, and all the other roles required to run and operate a successful business. I quickly had to learn to fill the roles of many, adapting to wearing countless hats and asking for help where needed. Needless to say, my days are full. I started making the sales calls myself and sending out email introductions, requesting face-to-face -face meetings. The person who says it cannot get done should not interrupt the person who is doing it. All I had was the faith in myself the extensive relationships I had cultivated throughout my career in a niche market in the corporate space. I would be remiss not to highlight here the importance of maintaining relationships, of proving to people that they can rely on and trust you, of never over-promising yet always over-delivering. Perhaps the name I built for myself over the years and my do-it-yourself spirit and never giving up attitude worked to my benefit. Today, EcoStyle is a respected manufacturer of premium cases protecting your valuable devices. And while I understand that there are thousands of other case companies in the world, I was and remain determined to make a product line that stands out. As Steve Jobs said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. At EcoStyle, we pride ourselves on the fact that we have never lost an account. In fact, our laptop cases are the standard in a growing list of Fortune 500 corporations, and our products are offered through some of the largest retailers. This journey has been a process of evolution for both myself as an individual, as well as EcoStyle, a company, and a brand. Acquiring both the titles of mother and business owner, and especially that in my case, these new ventures coincided, was understandably overwhelming at first, but with confidence I can say that every challenge has been an opportunity to grow. And at EcoStyle, we continue to grow. As my third child, Mila, entered the world, her birth coincided with the release of the iPad. Through happiness and joy along with sleepless nights, Mila changed my world, but it was the iPad which changed our world. Now, I needed to change what was currently being offered to accessorize the iPad, the laptop, and other devices. Let's face it, ladies, who here doesn't like to accessorize? I wanted to enhance life on the go. I wanted the luxury of going to work, my children's school, a lunch meeting, and a dinner party in the same day with the same sophisticated, fashionable, yet functional case. Our product line takes women from day to night and night to day effortlessly. I wanted to make women feel special by giving them something that they truly wanted. I thought to myself, we can do this, and we did just that. Our ladies' collection has enabled us to reach an appeal to a diverse clientele with a range of budgets affordable to everyone. EcoStyle earned a spot on the Today Show and Access Hollywood. Our partner tech data processed every single order flawlessly. We completely sold out in under two hours. And after positive feedback and satisfied customers, we were back on the Today Show only to repeat the same success story. Our ultimate goal is and will always be to exceed our customers' expectations. Of course, through the triumphs, there were plenty of trials and tribulations, constant rejection, unanswered emails and voicemails, potential customers unwilling to meet even briefly. As they say, everything works out in the end, and if it didn't work out, then it's not yet the end. I cannot stress enough the importance of never giving up, making an even greater effort when you think the opportunity is lost. Did I ever consider quitting? Absolutely. Did I ever actually quit? 
Absolutely not. What I did instead was realize that impossible is just a big word thrown around by people who feel trapped in the world as it is without realizing that they and we all have the power to affect change. Impossible isn't a fact, it's an opinion. Impossible is not a truth, it's a dare. Indeed, if you adjust your perspective, you could read it as I am possible. I am here today because of where I have been and because I have always believed in the possibilities. So please, take risks, bet on yourself. Doubt kills more dreams than failure ever could. And when you do experience failure, because we all do, remember that success is not rising to the top out of the gates, but falling down and getting back up again. Thank you. So another big round of applause for Sandy. And also, um, I probably should have mentioned this at first, but the gifts that you guys received on the way in, uh, that was uh, for, uh, from Sandy. So I just want to make sure that we make sure that we All right, so we're going to move right along. So our next speaker, uh, 